In today's video, the diet's over, now what do you do? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella, ProPhysique.com. It's Saturday morning and uh, yeah, it's been a couple days off, but for good reason. We had some vacation, we had some family time, went to a wedding yesterday. It's been an eventful last week. For those that aren't aware, one week ago was NPC Nationals. Team Pro Physique blew it up and um, we had a great weekend and then this week was, you know, getting ready for the holidays. So. I've had a common theme here amongst my discussions with my clients, my friends, and I've actually gotten some messages about this on the media of socials. And so I thought, you know what? Good time for this topic. That's why you clicked on the video, other than my pretty face, was to hear me talk about what do you do when the diet comes to an end. So I wanna talk about two specific scenarios because there's two different approaches that we can take. There's a million different approaches we can take, but specifically I wanna talk about the two type of approaches because as everyone out there knows, well, maybe not everyone, but most people that watch my videos, they know that I coach athletes when a contest season is over. That's one way to approach a diet. And even there, there's a couple of variations versus someone that's just ending their fat loss diet. So I wanna take this as broad as possible. So we're gonna talk about any type of diet. If you've been on a fat loss diet, how do you approach when that ends or when you reach your goal? And let's talk about photo lean or contest lean or getting shredded for some event. How do you approach that? Because I think they're, they're a little bit different. So let's start with the general population fat loss diet. Let's say you've been on the boiled egg diet. Let's say you've been on the grapefruit diet. Let's say you've been on the Atkins diet. Whatever diet name that you've been on and you've reached your goal. Let's say you jumped on this diet to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, and you reach your goal. How do you approach that period where I reach my goal and a lot of times when you reach a goal, you celebrate. And a lot of times when you celebrate, you go out drinking, you go eat, you celebrate, right? Maybe you celebrate by making your goal weight and you go on vacation and you're a little worried about what to do. Well. Let's talk about the specific act of this diet that you've been following. So if you took the approach where you just followed a diet based on a meal plan that was given, not specifically to you, but it was supposed to be some magical diet, right? You added this uh, drink to your morning, you had two shakes a day and had a meal for dinner. If you took an approach like this where you don't actually really know what your caloric intake is, I'm gonna have you do a homework assignment. I want you to do a diet recall. I want you to download an app. The newest one that I've seen that looks really handy is called Evolve. I want you to take that app, My Fitness Pal is another. There's plenty of good ones out there. Um, for gen pop people, we want the one that's most easy to use for you guys. I use one called Fit Day, and it's because I've been using it for seven years and it's just still around. So, um, But whatever it is, I want you to take the foods that you've been eating and there's search functions. So if you ate a boiled egg, you can put boiled egg. If, the, if you ate a salad, you can put salad. If you ate from McDonald's, you can put McDonald's, right? Whatever your specific diet was, I doubt it was a McDonald's, right? But whatever your specific diet was, you can plug those foods in to your app. And what it's gonna give you is some information. Some information such as protein, carb, fat intake, and possibly maybe some calorie intakes, things like that. Now what we're gonna do when we start coming out of this diet is educating ourselves. This is a gen pop approach. A lot of people, they don't wanna put in the work early on to lose weight as far as tracking what they're eating. They just jump into a diet and hey, if it works, great. The problem is if you don't educate yourself along the way, when you stop doing the quote unquote military diet, well, guess what? You don't know what you're taking in. So you just stop eating the foods that got you leaner and you start going out and eating with your friends and family and you're not really familiar with what your calorie intake is. Well, if you get off of the quote unquote diet that you were on and you find out that you were eating 800 calories a day, well, Coach Paul's gonna give you some very specific advice. I want you to add 50 calories a week. So let's say you were on 800 calories a day for 26 weeks, for 10 weeks, for eight weeks. 
When that diet is over, instead of jumping back into your normal lifestyle, which may have been 2, 2,500, 3,000 calories a day, may have been 1,200 calories a day, whatever it was, it was more than likely more than you were eating before. So if you jump back to that, we're gonna have something called metabolic adaptation. So your body actually goes through some changes when you are in a caloric deficit for a long period of time. It becomes more efficient at extracting calories. The processes that go on in your body that make up metabolism, basically all the chemical processes in your body, they change when you have less calories. So you can't necessarily jump back into the diet you were in before. So by adding 50 calories a week, right? So let's say you're on 800 calories. You go to 850 for the next week. How do you do that? Well, remember, I gave you some homework. You figured out what 800 calories look like from the diet you were on. You can add in 50 calories. A simple way to do that, quick math, 12 grams of carbohydrates. I know that sounds silly. How do I add 12 grams of carbohydrates? Well, you can add one chocolate rice cake. That's about 12 grams, that's about 48 calories. That's gonna be it. Now that sounds really tiny. You're like, Paul, but I was on this diet for so long. Yes, but if you want to keep the weight off, that you work so hard, you need to reverse the process slowly, okay? Now, you don't have to do it slowly, but if you wanna keep the weight off, you can slowly build up your metabolism. Now, the first week you add 50 carbs, 50 calories, sorry. The second week you add 50 calories. So if you keep doing this week over week, eventually you're gonna be up several hundred calories and you should be able to maintain your weight. Now, if you, have, if you blow it out one day and have a two or three or 4,000 calorie day, you're gonna risk putting on some body fat rather quickly because like I said, the adaptations that took place are gonna cause you to be able to put body fat on quickly. So it's not easy, but it was not easy for you to lose that weight, right? It was not easy for you to put the weight on over the last 20 years or 10 years or five years or whatever it was. So what we need to do is pay attention. The only person that's gonna be accountable for this is you. No one else is responsible for you but you. So if you're not putting in the work, there's gonna be no benefit, okay? It's just like anything else in life, put in the work. You wanna make money, put in the work. You wanna lose weight, put in the work. You wanna keep the weight off, put in the work. So that's how I would handle the process for the general population client. Focus on figuring out what your calories were. Add about 30 to 70 calories a week. We can just say 50. And let's say the first week you put those 50 calories back in and you don't gain any weight, maybe the next week you add 70. Maybe you just do 50 again. Let's say the scale drops. Maybe you do 100 calories the next week. That's what a coach has to do. I can't coach you through all of this, right? So, but you can leave comments below if you have a question, but that's what I would do. Um, you know, again, we wanna get your calories back up to a place where you don't feel hungry all the time, where you can maintain your weight and eat freely. And the more calories you have, the easier it is to go out and eat. And again, use your app as a search function. If you get invited out for a meal and you don't know what's in it, you're gonna have to do some homework. You're gonna have to do it. But technology makes this so easy. Back in the day, I used to have to look up things on the the RDA website, they didn't have like an app that just had all these millions of foods in there from restaurants and man, it's a lot better now. You know, back when I went to school, we had to walk uphill both ways to school in the snow. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the other one, the competitors, all my competitors, my peeps. We just had an amazing year. We just got done prepping and um, this goes without saying, there are two approaches now to the end of contest prep season. Depends how lean we got, depends how gnarly the diet was. But if we got crazy shredded and it took us 20 weeks or plus, and we're not gonna be competing again for six months or a year, we need to put on some body fat rather quickly. Okay, we don't want this super controlled reverse diet. I want you going out, I want you putting on a little bit of weight. My general rule of thumb is about 5% of your body weight, okay? That's a nice number. And hopefully when you do that within a couple days, you start to feel a little bit of satiety, you start to get some energy back, you start to have some great workouts in the gym, and you start to feel a little less food focused, okay? You start to feel a little bit less craving of random things, okay? But the important part is here that what we do is we focus on getting back on track with a meal plan. Now that might sound crazy, but I don't want you chasing macros all day long. I don't want you waking up, looking in the fridge, going in the pantry, looking for what you're gonna eat. We need the structure that we had during contest prep. What we do is we have a little more flexibility. So you have the same breakfast every day, you have the same lunch every day, you have the same last meal every day, but maybe the flexibility comes in your dinner. You sit down with your family, your boyfriend, your fiance, your friends, whatever it is, and you have a little bit of flexibility. So all they see is that you're now eating out and being social and doing things that you couldn't do during prep but they don't see that you're still having that structure. You're still hitting those meals every single day, hitting your macros, getting to the gym. We do not 
do not want to remove cardio completely, right? In some cases, I might literally cut it in half. If I have people doing an hour of cardio, I might bring it right down to 30 minutes, okay? But we want to keep some cardio in. We want to, we want to taper down the cardio as we're bringing up the calories, right? So we're going to have this, this path that crosses. And depending on your goals, now if someone's competing 12 weeks later, that's a different scenario. We're not going to try to put on 5% of our body weight. If you're ending a contest prep and you have another show in four weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks, we need to have a strategy. We need to say, okay, our, our weight can't get above a certain level. Um, who did an amazing job of this this year was Lauren Dannenmiller. Lauren competed in May, won an overall, went to Junior USA's, got top call out, went to Junior Nationals, got top call out, went to Universe, got top call out. Between all of these shows, what did we do? We ramped her calories up, brought her cardio down, made sure she was recovering. She even emailed me once and said, Paul, I'm really struggling. Like, I'm not able to sleep, um, a lot of anxiety. There was So we brought her calories up drastically during that period. And guess what? Her body responded fantastic. So well that she made it all the way to November. We really started dieting in January and made it all the way to November. Um, and she won the overall title at the biggest show of the year. Why? Because she was able to maintain her diet for an entire year, made it a lifestyle, and we reverse dieted with a purpose. We did not let her put on 15 pounds between shows even though she had three months, right? We had to have a strategy. One that worked for her and me, and that was a discussion we had to have. So that's where we need to come from with you. Are you taking a year, two years off? Get that scale weight up. Get your calories good. Crush the gym. Are you taking 12 weeks off? Let's bring the, the calories up and the cardio down a little bit, but let's pay attention. Let's keep you a few pounds over where we need to be to make sure you can come in for that next show just as gnarly and just as good. That's going to be it for me today, guys. Hopefully it wasn't too... Vague. I'm trying to be as specific as I can for two different populations of people, general pop population coming off a diet and contest prep coming off a diet because that's probably the most situations we're going to find. But if you have a specific request, question, comment, let me know below. We'll either get it on the podcast. Me and Lauren will cover it on Redefine Healthy Radio. If you're not listening to our podcast, please follow along. Leave a comment on there as well. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'm not so